My name is Kyle Merber. I am from Long Island, New York, and I am a recently retired professional runner. I have a mile personal best of three minutes and 52 seconds for the mile. And I have a few different world records as a member of various relay teams throughout my career. And I'm really excited to sit down and speak with you all today. Well, Kyle, you developed into a world-class runner on Long Island. Did you ever think about how your skills might transfer onto the ice? Yeah, funny you say that. I actually played hockey growing up. Um, so I would say it translated really well to ice skating. So it was one of the quicker ones getting up and down the ice. But when it came to putting the puck in the net, that was not my forte. But I was also very good at getting checked into the boards and tossed around. So uh, do have a little experience there. Now, did you play any other sports as a kid or were you just focused on running primarily? Yeah, I think it's really important when you're young to play a bunch of sports to not only kind of test what you're best at, but, to you know, just develop that overall athleticism. So I played baseball and soccer, basketball, hockey, and I started running at a young age. And then it wasn't until really high school that I put all of my energy and focus into running. Now, the question is, your big inspiration was it Dave Waddle or was it Derek Adkins? Yeah. So, so to give a quick background on Dave Waddle, he had was a middle distance runner, had an astounding comeback in 72 at the Munich Olympics and wound up winning a gold medal. And Derek Adams kind of grew up in your backyard. Yeah. So for me, you know, Dave Waddle is probably a little bit too old for me to really understand, you know, the impact he had on the sport when I was growing up. But Derek Adkins was a local hero uh, after the 1996 Olympics, he came back to his elementary school, which was my elementary school and told us all about his Olympic experience, showed us, showed us all the gold medal. And that was really what prompted me to want to sign up for track and field in the first place. Well, that was, that had to be one of the high points as you look back at your career, because it defined what you were going to do for the next 15 or so years. Yeah. And it definitely continues to motivate me to speak about my experience with younger athletes because it was such a, you know, important moment in my career. And it sent me on a, a different trajectory than maybe I would have ever thought I was going on. Cause I thought I was going to like the NBA, uh, but 
after meeting Derek, I, I became completely enthralled with track and field and that's how it all started. So you had a very successful high school career. You went to college and in your junior year of college, you sustained a pretty significant injury. Yeah. And how, how did, what happened and how did you recover from that? Yeah. So I, you know, I went to college at Columbia university in New York city and was having a great career. Things were going so well, so smooth. I broke four minutes for the mile as a sophomore, which was the Ivy league record. And I felt like I was invincible. And all of a sudden a freak accident one day I was for, I was going for a run at home during the summer and just thinking about how easy I was feeling and how good everything was going. And I stepped on a piece of glass and it went through my shoe and ended up tearing a tendon in my foot. And it's funny because at first I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It obviously hurt a ton and I yelled, I cursed and I went home and I, I didn't think I was going to have to take more than a couple of days off. But then the next morning I woke up and my foot had blown up and was, you know, a different color. And I immediately realized it was a bit more serious than I had intended or had at least initially assumed. And that let, you know, I kept thinking like, you know what, just one or two more days, I'll be better. One or two more days, I'll be better. And then before I knew it, it had been months and months. And I know it just felt really unfair because sometimes injuries happen in sports. If you're overtraining or, you know, something, you make a mistake, but I just felt like this was completely out of my control. And I remember being really upset seeing my teammates competing without me. And that was probably the hardest part. And I think of the moments of which, you know, the whole team would be going out for a run and I would be stuck there in the gym left alone to bike or swim or be on the elliptical. And yeah, it was, it was really tough, but I found that the best thing that I could do was control what I could control in that moment. And like what, you know, I have this new destiny and how am I going to control what path I'm now on? And I did everything that I could to be as strong as possible for when I eventually returned. I did everything I could to get healthy. And then once I was back, I actually came back a lot stronger. Um, I, you know, use that, use that as an opportunity to work on my weaknesses. And when I came back that next year, so I missed my entire junior year. And then my senior year, I set the American collegiate record for 1500 meters. So, you know, that year off, I think sent me on that, path that ultimately led to higher success than ever before you think because of the absence I mean the cross training and everything I'm sure played a role but do you think because of the absence your heart was really touched that I this is something that I've got to get back to because it's my life yeah certainly you know I think I almost was taking it for granted at times like you know I, things were going so easy and then all of a sudden I was hurt and I missed it so much. And it really forced me to think about it and appreciate it in a way that I'd never done before. And the, the mindset I sort of inhibited was when I get back, like, I'm going to do this with no regrets, because uh, I know how tough it is to be on the sidelines. And, you know, if I ever get the opportunity to compete again, I'm going to appreciate it like I've never appreciated it before. And it was motivating. Now, the thing that's kind of interesting, you talked about your teammates. I, I never really focused on distance running as being a team sport and an individual sport. You know, you think about it in yeah. swimming, maybe where a guy does the hundred and then he's a part of a four by hundred relay or something. Now, in, in your sport, in middle distance running, do you find that it's more fun to be part of a team or an yeah. individual? Well, so, you know, the benefits of the team is obviously there's a guy running next to you and that pushes you to stay with him. But even more so, it's about the camaraderie. It's about the morale. If your teammates are excited and positive and optimistic about their training in the upcoming races, that's contagious. Whereas if someone's sad and down and, you know, complaining about the workout, then that drags you down as well. And so being in a culture that lifts everyone up really does make a big difference in the mindset that you have on the day-to-day -day in practice, but then ultimately when you're standing on the starting line in a race. 
I think that holds true to when you're in a hospital or you're in recovery that, you know, it's, it's real easy to get down. Yeah. And, oh. and it's important to surround yourself with positive people so that you are motivated to get better. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think of it as well, like, you know, when cross training alone in the pool, how distant you can distant you can feel from your teammates who are out in the park running. And sometimes just something as simple as a teammate saying, Hey, you know, like I'll swim with you today, like lightens up your life all of a sudden. And, you know, you have a new energy and it's a quick reminder of like, this is why I'm doing this is so that way I can be back out there with them. That's great. Now, the thing that's interesting is track stars are kind of like pro lacrosse players in that they have to create their own identity on social media in order to build you know, your brand. Now, how do you use social media to build your brand and to, I mean, I know you're retired, but yeah, no, I still do it. You're you're retired with, you know, finger italics, but yeah. So, you know, I have always really liked using Twitter and Instagram to tell my story because that's what, that's ultimately what sports comes down to. Like you are rooting for a football team maybe, but really like, you know, that quarterback and you are invested in their success and you know, in some more niche sports like track and field, it kind of falls on the shoulders of the athlete to be the one promoting themselves and telling their story and giving fans the behind the scenes look and reasons why they should be cheering for you. And I think that having social media gives you that platform to still have a voice and to interact with people and keep it fun and show your personality. And uh, I've always really enjoyed it. It's a fun part of the sport for me. Think about it. When you were in high school and college, there probably really wasn't any social media. So it has evolved during your career and it's something you've had to learn. Is, is there somebody that you followed online that kind of say, Hey, I want to be like that guy. Or yeah. that guy? Well, for me, the people that I probably follow the most are my competition. And I want to see what they're up to and uh, get, uh, get an idea of what I'll be lining up against. And it's motivating to see other people having success of their own. You see someone run a fast time and all of a sudden you're, well, you know, let me show you what I can do. And uh, so social media, it, you know, you don't want to get too caught up in what everyone else is doing at times, but at others, it's, it's really good source of inspiration. So, um, now that you're quote unquote retired, are you, do you still like to run? Yeah, I still run every day. Uh, <laughs> every day. Yeah. It, it, the only reason that I maybe won't go for a run is if I'm skiing, which is a newfound hobby of mine, or if I'm going for a really long bike ride. But, uh, you know, I think that's the beautiful thing about running is you don't need a full team of guys to be able to go out and play you can just go do it on your own. And I really think that you get to be a lifelong athlete and yeah. And so it's still, it's part of who I am. And even if I'm not competing at the same level that I was, I still enjoy going out for a little run every morning. So now that you're retired from running, you've mentioned that you swim, you cycle, you run. It kind of talks yeah. to triathlon. Yeah, a lot of people I think are trying to push me that way or asking, but um, I, I think I'm not quite good enough at swimming or cycling that I'd be any better at triathlon than I was at running. Now, does your wife run? Yeah, uh, you know, she is also a runner. She actually ran in college. She's originally from Ireland and then came over to the United States on a track field scholarship. And so, you know, she, she never ran professionally, but every morning she still gets up and goes for a run. That's awesome. Would you encourage a little Kyle Jr. down the road yeah. to, to take up running? I, you know, I, I think that you, you'd have to push your kids uh, very gently into the sport. You want, people, you want people to find it on their own. It's a lot. It's definitely something that you need to be intrinsically motivated to get the most out of. And I think, at least in my experience, my parents were never like, go for a run. You got to go for your run. Like they've never once said it. It was more so like, you're going running again. And because of that, it became my thing. And it was easy to push myself because it was something that I was doing for myself. Now, if you could write your fairy tale ending to your running career, 
Yeah. What would it be? Paris Olympics in 24? Yeah. New City Marathon, breaking four minutes at the Long Island Mile. What I know. It? Yeah, initially it was going to be uh, win the gold medal at the Olympics and <laughs> sail off into the sunset. But uh, really now, like, I think that's maybe my professional career, maybe over as a miler, but I do hope to one day compete in the marathon. You know, I think the New York City Marathon is probably calling my name, just it being the home course. And we'll see, uh, you know, the, I think the most important thing is to just stay healthy and enjoy the process of running and the, the day-to-day grind. Well, you know, we appreciate you using your celebrity here to give back. You know, there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot of kids that w- would really love to be able to do what you do. And you're, telling them about how you overcame setbacks and how, you know, you found something that you really love and you do it well, that's giving back. And that's important. Well, you know, I, in my career, I had that one major injury, but I've had plenty of other major injuries, especially as a professional. And I understand how difficult it can be to be on the sidelines. And I, I know that you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics along the way in order to stay positive. But I really do believe that every time I got injured, I came back stronger because of it with a, a more resilient mindset than ever before. Lessons were learned and, you know, you just have to put your head down at times and focus on what you can do to stay in the right place. And a lot of times, you know, it can feel helpless, but that's when you lean on your teammates and that's when you seek out, you know, the assistance of those around you to help lift your spirits. Because I really do think that having that sort of mindset translates into success in everything that you do. Well, Kyle, thank you for being the inspiration that you are. I have a feeling that we're going to be hearing from you a lot more in the future. And, and I think it's really important, especially for kids in the hospital, to have heroes that they can look up to and they can, uh, you know, just measure their own success and say, OK, we are we're going to get better. And when we do get better, just like Kyle, we're going to be stronger when we get better. So, so thank you for sharing that message. It's really an important one. And we appreciate it very much. Yeah, no, it's great to speak with you and uh, rooting for everyone to get back out there really soon. Thank you.